committee member, all our pastors, and all those that have uh, contributed to making this retreat a success. And for all those of you that are here, I want to bless the Lord and appreciate God on your behalf and thank you as well. I'm praying that the plan and the purpose of God for your life, your homes and family, and for even those that are not here physically will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. And uh, at this time, as we conclude, we'll be talking on the exploits of a spirit-controlled family. The exploits of a spirit-controlled family. Uh, very quickly, who can tell us the meaning of exploit, your understanding of exploit? Anybody? Let's make it very quick. The exploit. What do you understand by the word exploit? Anybody raise up your hand? Yes, sir. Say that again. An exploit is an exemplary outstanding achievement. Thank you so much. Any other person can tell us the meaning, your understanding of the word exploit? Yes. Yes. Uh, um, the, uh, doing exploit is when you set a goal you meet the goal and then you exceed it. You set the goal, you meet the goal, and you exceed it. Yes, my brother. Praise the Lord. Exploits are derivatives of endeavors in life. Derivatives of endeavors in life. Thank you so much. And so as we look at this message today, the exploits of a spirit control family. Before we get into it, let me uh, tell you a story and then we'll pray. Maybe let us pray first and then I'll tell you the story. Praise the Lord. So let us pray. Father, we are grateful for bringing us here. We appreciate you for what you have been doing, for lives being touched, yokes being broken, eyes being opened. We well, thank you, Father, because of what you intend doing and what you're already doing in the lives of everyone. Be with us and bless us through the power of your word. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Uh, let me tell you the story quickly as we get into the exploits of a spirit-controlled family. You know, some years back, I'm talking about somebody I know in person, somebody I had saying this directly, this individual was very, very sick, and efforts were made for her to see the GS. And you know, it wasn't that easy to see the GS back then. But then she was able to see the GS for prayers. And uh, she came back, and then after coming back, this is what I had her saying. She said, well, I went to see Pastor XYZ. But you know what? The person who is to pray for me himself is sick. I think the GS had weather boil in the eyes, and then she used the word Apollo. She said he himself had Apollo. Uh, she made fun of it. I stand here to tell you she died in that situation. Now, you can say you know this speaker, you know that speaker, you know that speaker. I know this about his life. I know that about her life. And because of that, you discountenance the word of God. It's not for your good. Pay attention to the word of God. Praise the Lord. For the fact that a medical doctor has sickness in his body does not mean that his brain is dead to take care of your own problem. Are you listening to me? So, Revelation chapter 2 verse 7 says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to, to the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Matthew chapter 11 verse 15 says, He that hath an ear, let him hear. And then, Chapter 13 of Matthew again, verse 9, repeated the same thing. Who had ears to hear, let him hear. Whatever you are hearing today is for your good. And I pray to do you well in Jesus' name. 
Let's quickly get into Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through to 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed, be not conformed, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to God, according as God had dared to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the sense of his, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministry. Let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, giving to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. I need an amen there. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that we be of the same mind, one with another, husband and wife, parents and children. Be of the same mind, one with another. Mind not the things, mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Recompense to no man, evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible as much as it lies in you, in you, live peaceably with all men. I need another amen. amen. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Said the Lord, therefore, if the enemy hunger, what do you do? Feed him. If he thirst, what do you do? Give him drink, for in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Every truly born again. I'm done with the reading. Every truly born again child of God has the Holy Spirit in him or her. And you want to be sure that you allow that Spirit of God to control you, to direct you, to guide you, to lead you in everything that you do. Unfortunately, many people have replaced the righteousness of God that attracts and brings the presence and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit into their lives. They have replaced that righteousness with religion. They replace that righteousness with how long they have been in the church. They replace that righteousness with what, with what and what they do in the church. Now, activity, religion, or length of time in the church will not take the place of righteousness. And if righteousness is not there, the Holy Spirit cannot be there because the opposite of righteousness is unrighteousness. And light and darkness cannot dwell together. That is why you want to examine yourself, examine your life to be sure that you are really, really in faith and the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Those people that are merely religious and not righteous fail to experience the same power of resurrection that raised up the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. The same power that worked mightily in the apostles of old. The same power of the living God that has turned around and transformed the life of many homes and families. If you will just come to Christ and submit unto him and allow him to lead you, to guide you, to instruct you, he will perfect all that concerns you in Jesus' name. The Holy Spirit 
was at work at the time of creation. Everything that needed to be recreated in your life, he will do it in Jesus' name. And then, the, you know, the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis that the Spirit of God moved upon the deep. Upon the deep. That same Spirit will come and move in your life, move in your home, move in your family again in Jesus' name. Amen. The Holy Spirit comforts, instructs, directs, corrects, protects, preserves, provides, prospers, partners with us, and perfects us. You need the, turn to someone and say, you need the Holy Spirit. Turn to another person and say, you need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the top person in the Godhead. He is not less in power. He is not less in performances. He is to abide with us forever. To have him and be controlled by him, we must believe in him. We must embrace him. We must obey him. We must depend upon him so that our lives and families will be what God intended for it to be. And so will it be in Jesus' name. Marriage is significant to God. Because it is part of his ordained plan to provide the world with a picture of his love for humanity. So, God has raised the family to be his true representation here in the world. Marriage becomes the means for married couples to demonstrate their love for God as well as for one another and to live peaceably with one another to glorify the name of the Lord. But all those cannot be possible without the spirit of the living God. The spirit of the living God. God established marriage as a covenant, not as a contract. And whatsoever therefore God has joined together according to the scripture, let no man do what? Put asunder. John chapter 14 verse 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Romans chapter 8, looking at it from verse 11 says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. How I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will possess you. Somebody just means that one. We talk about demon possession. But we don't understand that the Holy Spirit also possesses people. It's either you are possessed by the Holy Spirit or by a demonic spirit, satanic spirit, evil spirit, in anything and everything that you do. I won't finish reading that uh, chapter 8 of uh, Romans. I, I'll move forward. You need the Holy Spirit of God. Understand also that you need the Spirit to be able to get anything accomplished and everything accomplished. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 says, Then he said, and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by mind, not by power, but by my spirit, somebody, by my spirit says the Lord. By my spirit says the Lord. You can remove the name Zerubbabel. Because Zerubbabel is no more here. You are here, I am here. And then you say to yourself, I will be able to accomplish everything successfully by the spirit and the power of the Lord. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. I look at four points. How many points? Four points. Number one, the priority of godliness in a spirit-controlled family. The priority of godliness in a spirit-controlled family. Number two, the pursuit of godliness in a spirit-controlled family is something you pursue. Is something you run after. Is something you work out. Number three, the peril of godlessness in a Satan controlled family, the peril, the danger, the destruction, the adversities of godlessness in a Satan controlled family. And finally, the power. Somebody say power. Somebody say power. The power of God is coming upon you, your home, your family in Jesus' name. 
The power of godliness in the spirit control family. Let's come to point number one. Can somebody remind me point number one? The priority. God must be made a priority in our life. In anything and everything that we do. Before you think of your feeling, think of God. Before you take a step, think of God. Before any action, think of God. Before you respond to anything, think of God. Is God being honored in this that I am doing? By this action of mine, by this language of mine, by this behavior of mine, by this character and the conduct of mine, is God being glorified? Let's look at it, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, the one that started it all, that instituted and established marriage. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. I will make him now, no matter what is happening in your life, understand, God says it is not good. There are people that are still living together, but in reality, they are not together anymore. They are living alone. They are living alone. Everybody stays in different rooms. Everybody lives on, uh, sleeps on different bread. Everybody eats differently. Everybody plans differently. Everybody has different accounts. It is not good that a man should be alone. And there are some that it's gotten worse. They say, well, I'm not going to divorce, but now they live in separate houses together. It is not good that a man should be alone. This is the word of the Lord. He says, I will make and help me for him. I pray that your helper will be there with you for you in Jesus' name. This is the primary purpose of God for marriage, for fellowship, for companionship, for mutual help, and for comfort. Not that alone. Marriage is there for purity. It's there for partnership. It's there for pleasure. It's there for procreation. It's there for prosperity. As well as for protection. To protect each and every one of us. The primary purpose of marriage is for God to be glorified. And I pray in your life, in my life, in our lives together, our marriages will glorify God. In the name of Jesus. So, God created a family in Eden as one indivisible, united union to work as a team. Somebody say, as a team. When you work as a team, everybody in the team knows what everybody is doing. Nobody in the team is doing something different, planning different. No, every team in the soccer team, in the basketball team, in any other team, they all work together, they reason together, they plan together, they connect together, they coordinate together. Nobody does anything separate and understand. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they were united in the creation of the world, and they are indivisible. Nothing will divide your home. Nothing will divide your family. In the name of Jesus. And I want to say that when we talk about the family, uh, this is the best way I always like to describe the family. Look at a triangle. The triangle, uh, the, the top part of it, and then the two legs. You see God on the top. is the head of everything. And then the left and the right, you see the man and the woman. You say, where then are the children inside the triangle is where the children come in. They come in there, and when they are grown up, what do they do? They leave. But God, the man, the woman, they are still there. And then the children, of course, they are still part of the family. That is why they come from the womb, from inside of the triangle. And they remain children eternally. I pray that God will protect and preserve our children in Jesus' name. To prioritize God in our lives, in our homes, in our family, we must, number one, have the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. The Bible says in, Gen in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The knowledge of the holy is understanding. Now, look at the way Job puts it. It says in Job chapter 28, verse 28, And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Anything you do in your life that is evil, that is unholy, that is unrighteous, that is against your partner, is 
a proof and the evidence of your lack of understanding. You lack the understanding of the fact that whatsoever a man so that he shall reign. You lack the understanding of the fact that one day we give account unto God of everything that we have done. And to fear the Lord, there must be first of all genuine repentance. There must be uh, the giving up of every life of sin, every nature of sin. And I always tell people that most of the problems we have in our homes and family is because many of us lack genuine conversion. We are not genuinely converted. Yes, we have the knowledge of the Bible. Yes, we have the knowledge of how things are done in the church. Yes, we have been long in the church. Yes, we dress like the people that are called Christian. Yes, uh, we can tell stories of this and stories of that. But the real encounter with Christ, the real experience of conversion is lacking. Bring ye forth fruit meat for repentance. Many of the things you do against your spouse is because you do not have the fear of the Lord. If you fear the Lord and you know that he's the judge of the whole world and that he judges the intent and the actions of man, you will think twice before the things you do the things you do. You think twice before you behave the way you behave. You think twice, twice before you hurt your wife or before you hurt your husband. You think, think twice before you plot against your spouse because God sees everything and judges everything. And then you love the Lord. You love the Lord. If you really love God, you will love the work of God, the creatures of God. And if you really love God, you will not say, well, though I'm married, I'm married. I don't like these people. I don't like this family. I don't like this. I don't like that. No. It's not going to be so you love God and all the works of God, the creatures of God. Mark chapter 12, verse 20. Mark chapter 12, verse, verse 30, sorry. Mark 12, 30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Not just with the heart, but all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. The Lord will give us the grace in Jesus' name. To make God priority, we shun worldliness, worldliness, worldliness. First John chapter 2, verse 15. A lot of us are going through what we are going through because of uh, worldliness, kind of comparison, comparing this with this, uh, and uh, some kind of desires that are not godly, that are not righteous. Uh, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in in the world, the loss of the flesh and the loss of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world does what? Passes away. And the lost therefore, but he that doeth the will of God abides forever. 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 Understand that life is not over here. Is continuous in eternity. When you do the will of God here, whether in your marriage or in your family, then you will live with God forever. Some people, they forget about eternity. They forget that uh, heaven is still there, hell is still there, and that God will judge everything we do, even in our homes and families and the way we do them. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Matthew Chapter 6, verse 19, lay up not, lay up for yourselves. Lay up, for, I take that. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Where moth and rust doth corrode, but we are thieves. And we are thieves break through and steal. Verse 20, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. We are neither moth nor rust doth corrode. And where thieves do not break through, nor steal. For where your treasure is, somebody help me, there will your heart be also. If your heart is in heaven, if your mind is in heaven, if your interest is in heaven, you prepare for heaven while you are here on earth. And then you will honor God with your life, and God will be number one, and you make him the priority of over 
everything that you do. Mark tells us in chapter 8, verses 36 and 37, for what shall it profit a man? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? In exchange for his soul, in exchange for his soul, you have only one life, and if you miss that opportunity, you'll cry in hell. You will weep. And by then, it will be too late. So, return back unto God. God is calling you. He's the true vine. You, are, uh, he's the true vine. And then, the husbandman, the father, is also calling you. And Jesus said, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he will be, will be taken away. But everyone that bears fruit, he will purge it. He will purge you. He will purify you. He will prosper you. He will perfect you so that you'll be able to bring forth more fruit. More fruit. So then, as couples, we must be fruit-bearing Christians. We must bear the fruit of righteousness. We must bear the fruit of love, the fruit of joy, the fruit of peace, the fruit of long-suffering, the fruit, all the fruits that God really intended for us. Goodness is there, bear that fruit. The fruit of faith is there, bear it. Meekness and gentleness, bear that fruit. Temperance is there, bear that fruit. And then you'll see God glorified and magnified. Get sanctified. Get sanctified. There is no way you can really, really please God and make him number one in your life without sanctification. That's why Jesus said in uh, John chapter 17, verse 17, sanctify them by your word, through your word. Thy word is truth. If you lack anything, as you call upon the Lord, he will do it for you in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. If we really love the Lord, if we really fear the Lord, if we really want to serve the Lord, if we really make him priority, we will obey his word. Verses 1 and 2 says, Be ye therefore followers of God, as dear children, beloved children, lovely children, obedient children. Be ye therefore followers of God, as dear children, and walk in love. And Christ also, hath, as Christ has loved us, and has given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice of God for a sweet smelling savor. Let's look at verses 21 through to the end of that same chapter, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. And the scripture cannot be broken. You can't change the word of God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not jot or teaching of the word of God will pass unfulfilled. It says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord. In the fear of the Lord. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. I know you know it. I know you can recite it. I know you can quote it from time to time. But are you obeying it? Are you living by it? Verse 24, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Verse 25, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the world that he might present it to himself, a glorious church. And that's what I'm telling you, that marriage is not only limited to this world. When we cross over to eternity, we give account of everything that we have ever done in our homes and family in Jesus' name. Come back to that verse 25 again, where it says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. And give himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spots or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own body. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they two shall become how many? One flesh. This is a great mystery. 
But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you now, husband and wife, let every one of you, husband in particular, let every one of you love one another. And you men, love your wife in particular as yourself. And the wife sees that she references her husband. As we obey all this, the blessings of God will come upon our lives in Jesus' name. And so now, this is the, of the, 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 the priority. God is number one. How do we now pursue in our relationship with one another? How do we pursue godliness? Because we are human. Offenses will come. And you had it yesterday. There is no one that can say everything is perfect. Now, we are talking about a little mistake here, a little mistake there. Things due to ignorance, we are not talking about wickedness. If there is any wicked act between, that you are doing against your wife or against your husband, it's because Christ is not in you. The spirit of God is not in you. The presence of God is not in you. The power of God is not in you. Of course, you have a spirit, but not the Holy Spirit of the Lord. You are being controlled by another spirit. And the Lord will deliver you from that spirit in Jesus' name. Again, to be able to pursue godliness effectively, there must be fear of God. Fear of God again. Fear God and serve him heartily. Serve him heartily. When you see people that are not passionate about serving God, passionate about the things of God, honest and sincere about the things of God, something is wrong with their life. Something is wrong with their confession. Something is wrong with their uh, um, with, 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 with what they are talking about, their confession. Amen? And it's a matter of time, it will come out. You cannot cover smoke for too long. It will escape. Genuine conversion and daily watchfulness will save the day. Examine yourself. How that Jesus Christ is in you. Is in you. Know you not your own selves, except ye be reprobates. Religion and its practices will never take the place of righteousness. And I told you before, Luke chapter 1 tells us from verse 73, the oath which he swear to our father Abraham, that ye will grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemy, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Fear God. Number two, faith in God. You need faith in the Lord. Believe God in everything for everything and through everything. Marriages do have storms. Do have storms. Marriages, couples do go through storms. But in the midst of the storm, if you are united in Christ, you will come out of the storm. Amen? Amen. I said you will come out of the storm. Mark chapter 11 verse 22 says, Jesus answered said unto him, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. No matter the storm you are going through, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he uh, said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. The power for everything to come to pass, God will give unto you in Jesus' name. Verse 24, therefore I say unto you, who is God talking to here? Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever. Somebody say, whatsoever. You desire, when you pray, believe that, that ye receive them, and you will have them. I say you will have them. That is how to believe in God. The storm will rage. The wind will blow. But you hold on to God. Job of us, although he slay me, I will maintain my integrity before him. You see a lot of things happening, and people will talk. And people will talk. They will run their mouth because they do not understand. And they do not understand. And some of them, the devil will steer them up against you also. 
You are going through the storm, you are going through the problem, you are going through the challenge, and then they will become the agent of darkness, but you will overcome in Jesus' name. I need a better one. Amen. Let me tell you something. There is no way you can stop the wind from blowing. Are you with me? And when wind blows in the forest, many a times it is to test the stamina, the health, and the strength of the tree. All the trees that are standing, but in reality they are dead and rotting within, what will happen to them? They will fall off. I prophesy into your life you will not fall off. No matter the wind of light that blows into you, blows into your home, blows into your marriage, you will stand in Jesus' name. It is to test you. You have said, I believe in God. I believe the word of God. I believe in this. I believe in that. I confess this. I possess this. And now the trial has come. You will stand. We all together will stand in Jesus' name. Amen. And then fellowship. Someone say fellowship. Fellowship with saints, with openness of mind, with purity of heart, and not for the gain of it. You know, some people, once a little problem happens, they pack their load, they say, I am going, I am going nowhere. I said, I am going nowhere. And some, because of their personal challenge, because of their personal problem, things are not happening the way they want it to be, and then they say they are thrown in the towel. They don't want to serve the Lord anymore. I will serve the Lord. I said I will serve the Lord. You know, one of the songs I love to sing, if you've been around for a while, you must have heard me sing this before. It says, I will praise the Lord with your life, with your service, with everything. I will praise the Lord no matter what tomorrow brings. Or what it has in store, I know I will praise the Lord. You don't because of this problem and that problem throw in the toil, uh, toil and allow the devil win the battle. I will never let the devil win the battle. I will never compromise with him. Though he may fight from within, though he may fight from without, I will never, I will never let the devil win. You don't understand that when the devil tries you from outside and tries from outside and tries from outside and tries from outside and couldn't get you, then he comes inside. He comes through your spouse. He comes through your children. He comes through your parents. But then you stand your ground. I say you stand your ground. And I say you stand your ground. Because at the end of it all, what matters is eternity. One day, husband will be gone. Wife will be gone. Children will be gone. And then you stand before the throne of grace. To give account for your life. What account will be given by then? Eh, it's because of my wife. Eh, it's because of my husband. Eh, it's because of, of my children. At the end of your life, you will not lament. The Lord will keep all of us together in Jesus' name. And then you serve one another. True love. You serve one another. You be exceptional. And be example of a believer. And for that to happen, I will tell you 12 pillars. Somebody say 12 pillars. 12 pillars of the exploits of a spirit control family that will get you to get results. Number one, you need desire. Desire. You must be desirous of a godly family. Whatsoever you desire when you pray, the Bible says believe and it will happen unto you. Desire it. Number two, there must be dedication. The power of dedication. Number one, the power of desire. Number two, the power of dedication. You have to commit yourself. You have to devote yourself into making things to happen. There is no family without squabble. It is our decision to make it work that keeps things ongoing. Remember, it is what you work at that works. So, do your part. Amen? 
Whether your spouse is doing his or her part or not, it's not the issue. You will not give account for your spouse. You will give account for your own life. Are you with me? And then God will be happy with you in Jesus' name. Number three, the power of devotion. Devotion. Here I'm talking about prayer. Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. Understand? From the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and only the violent will take it up. By force, you need to prayerfully rescue your family from the hands and the pangs and the powers of darkness and uh, devote yourself to the Lord in prayer and understand that prayer is a principal thing. The forces of darkness are working against homes and families. And if they don't get homes and families, they can't get the church. If they can't get the church, then they can't deprive us from making it to heaven. So, the ultimate goal is to deprive us of eternity with God in heaven, but the enemy will fail. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, and understand all that only the power of God can destabilize the forces of darkness. It's not so much of the amount of books, you know, uh, read books, uh, go for conference, do this and that. Look at us here. Look at me here. We've been doing couples retreat for many years. Am I right? Why has things not really fallen in place? The enemy is at work. But by the power of the Lord, we will overcome. That is why we need prayer. The weapons of our warfare are not, my, uh, are not carnal. But, 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 mighty. You have a mighty weapon. Use it and it will work in Jesus' name. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Listen Again, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We therefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand. You will withstand. I say you will withstand. You will stand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. Stand there for having your loins got about the truth. Always be honest. Because something happened in the family, don't try to, to win the argument. Don't try to concoct story. Don't try to bring in things that didn't happen. Don't try to play the devil's card. Be truthful in everything. Even if you are wrong, admit I am wrong. Amen? And submit yourself unto the Lord. And let God have mercy. And indeed he will have mercy in Jesus' name. And he says, and having on, having on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate is always there. So that anybody that sees you, they see righteousness. Amen. And even if they want to pick on you and attack you and they will look like Daniel. They couldn't have anything against Daniel. The breastplate of righteousness is always there. Do things that are right at all times. And if anything happens and somebody say, uh, brother, sister, why don't you do this? I said, I, I did that already. Why don't you do that? I did that already. How about this one? I did it already. And then I say, ah, I don't know what, what else to say. You'll be righteous. I said you'll be righteous. And then, no matter what is happening, keep serving the Lord, verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, above all, taking the shield of faith, believing that all will be well. I said all will be well. You remember song, the song we sang yesterday? I have a feeling everything's gonna be all right. I have a feeling everything's gonna be all right. Oh, 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 I have a feeling everything's gonna be all right. Be all right, be all right, be all right. And so we also need the power of dedication. Dedication. The power of diligence. Working hard and working smart. Diligence. You know, the Bible says, Seest thou a man 
who is diligent in his work. He will stand before kings and not mean men. And the Lord will keep you in Jesus' name. How about the power of dependence? The power of dependence. To depend on someone is to have trust. We dealt with the issue of trust. To, 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 to have reliance on somebody. And then you, you, you are able to do things together. You are able to do things in harmony. And then you have a partner without secrecy. You have a partner that you don't go behind to backbite. You have a partner that you work with, you don't work against. Whenever you see anybody working against their partner, whether directly or indirectly, they have another spirit working in them. They are not a team player. They are not a team member. Anytime you see any partner doing anything secretive behind the partner, they don't have the mind of Christ. They don't have the spirit of Christ. They are selfish. They are self-centered. They are egoistic. They look at the physical thing. They ignore the spiritual thing. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I need a better one. Amen. And then when, as we talk of, of this dependence, you have somebody as a partner, the man or the woman, that in anything you can go to and say, honey, you know, I'm going through this. I'm going through that. And uh, what do you think we should do? And a good husband and a good wife, a godly husband, a godly wife, a virtuous husband, a virtuous wife, will not just say, I don't know, um, because you don't care. And how about this one? I don't know. How about that one? I don't know. What will you know? God will help us in Jesus' name. Why don't you really bring your heart and your life into this marriage relationship? Why did you marry in the first place? If you don't want to work with that man, work with that woman. Why did you get married to that? Why do you want to frustrate the life of that partner? Why do you want to be an agent of darkness to destabilize the plan and the purpose of God? Every work of darkness, God will destroy them in Jesus' name. And so, for that to happen, we need the power of dialogue. Dialogue. Communication. Communication. Talk with one another. Be constructive in your communication. Communication is crucial to the success of every organization, including our homes and family. Look at it, every organization, every nation of the world, if there are problems, what they always resort to is communication. If they don't resort to communication, they will resort to warfare, to ammunition, to killing and destroying one another. At the end of the day, who wins? Nobody wins. By the time you are saying, I won the battle, I won the battle, many lives are lost already. You may say, as a man, I won the battle, your children are lost already. As a woman, I won the battle, your children are lost already. Your integrity, your dignity, your name, your fame, everything is on the line already. Nobody win in any battle. Let us dialogue together to the glory of the name of the Lord, and God will help us in Jesus' name. And then the power of detribalization. Some of us are married, but we are still tribalistic. It's still the proof and evidence that something is lacking. Christ is not fully formed in us. And to destribalize is to cause to lose tribal allegiance, traditions, and customs. This is the way they do it in my place. And when we talk about uh, detribalization, maybe you are even from the same place, but then you are so local and traditional in your way to the point that the word of God does not matter to you anymore. Give up that tradition. The word of God is to have the final control over every tribe, over every culture, over every tradition, anywhere in the world. Forever, oh God, thy word is settled forever and in an amen. No matter how they do it in your place, they do it in a different way in another place. But the word of God tells us how to do it everywhere. That whether you are in Africa, you are in Asia, you are in America, you are anywhere in the world, it's the same standard of the word of God. The word of God. The power of detribalization. The, the power of diet. The power of diet. The food you eat, the way you eat, you need it also. Or maybe I should tell you, they talked about it. Honey, if you want to live long, watch your diet. 
Praise God. And you women, please let me talk to our women right now. The power of diet. Stop killing your husbands. Because you know that man can eat. He can eat like elephant. And then you say, he wants to eat. That's what he wants to eat. I give to him. You are the watch woman over him. Praise God. The Bible in Proverbs chapter 31 says, the virtuous one gives a portion. Somebody say a portion. Not the portion that is good. Not that you get the man so fat. Amen. And the man wants to walk. Like one of the pastors said, I'm, I was climbing. By the time I get to a certain level, I couldn't go again. Praise the Lord. Amen. The power of diet, and we all will live long in Jesus' name. And then, don't deprive yourself, don't deny yourself of food. Food is important. Neither your husband, nor your children, nor your wife should be deprived or denied food. And as we talk about food, I'm talking about both the agricultural food, you understand, and the natural food. You know, children are listening to us. Praise God. How many of you know what is the natural food? You know natural food. Some of you don't know. Ah. Praise God. The Bible said that we should not defraud one another. Amen. Except because of fasting, consent, agreement together. We agree together that we are going to fast. Or your spouse, uh, your spouse is not fasting, but you agree, okay, go ahead and fast. Uh, the Bible says don't defraud one another. If you deprive your spouse of the natural food, the Bible says you are a froster. And no froster will make it to heaven. And you had it over here. As a woman, you have the right to the body of the man. As a man, you have the right to the body of the woman. You are one united together in the visible in the sight of God and in an amen. The power of diet. Diet. Then the power of disrespect. Now, disrespect can destroy, can destabilize. So, prevent disrespecting one another. Prevent disrespecting each other's family. Dis the, uh, prevent the disrespecting of each other's passion. Your wife has passion for this, your husband has passion for this, and it's nothing sinful. Try to work together, and God will work with you in Jesus' name. Then, number, what's the next number now? Number 10. Number 10. Sorry, number 11, I meant to say. Number 11, the power of dream. Dream big. Dream great. Dream romance. Dream without limitation. And you'll be shocked what God will do through that dream. Appreciate one another. Be considerate of one another. Be supportive to one another. Always think within you, what can I do to appreciate my spouse? What can I do to, to, to support my spouse? What can I do to make my spouse happy? Not to make him angry. Not to make him sad and sorrowful. There is something that's called the law of... Um, um, Effect and uh, what do you call it now? Cause and effect. Cause and effect. You do this, there's going to be a reaction one way or the other. Why don't you do this, the right thing and allow God to be glorified? Dream to see you and your spouse living together to old age. Old age. Begin to imagine by the time we turn 60, 70, 80. How is it going to be? Begin to dream. And when you have that mindset, you are walking towards it right from now. Amen? And you'll be surprised that none of you will die young. Amen. Amen. Dream your husband being your best friend, your wife being your best friend. Shoot yourself to be friendly in everything. But of course, you know all this we're talking about. It takes two to tangle. If one person is positive and the other one is negative, it's not going to work. But whoever that is not making it to work, the judgment of God will come. But I pray that you will not perish in that judgment. In Jesus' name, dream to be the consultant of your spouse. To be the counselor of your spouse. The watch over your spouse, the guide of your spouse, the provider for your, the, uh, for your spouse, the shield for your spouse. Your spouse will be your best, best 
friend. Dream and each free relationship and walk towards it. Again, it is what you work out that works. Finally, on that, the power of discouragement. The power of discouragement. I've been talking positive about this last two. Discourage the use of sex deprivation. Discourage the use of children loyalty. Using your children to fight your spouse is not godly. Discourage the abuse of financial privilege. You have the upper hand and then you are oppressing your partner. It's not good. Or maybe you have a secular position or class uh, and you're using that to harass to, or to intimidate or oppress. That's not right. Discourage external forces such as friends, extended family from interfering in your family. It has its own power. If you don't discourage those things, they will destroy your homes and family. Discourage closeness with the opposite sex at work. Discourage it, brother, sister, discourage it. You know, many times we look at the brothers as the one affected. But I can tell you as a pastor, and I can tell you that even in this church, we have sisters that are messing around. That are messing around. Their marriage, they're still under the same roof, and yet they have a boyfriend outside. And they say they are workers in the church. May the Lord deliver us in Jesus' name. Amen. And we have brothers also. I'm just saying the satellite is most is always on the brothers for the most part. But it happens both ways. And I'm not trying to imagine. I'm talking about reality. Reality. The Lord will deliver us. The enemy, the, there is a crack in the wall. The enemy has come in. But the power of the Holy Ghost will consume all the power of darkness in Jesus' name. So, discourage closeness of the opposite sex, whether at work or in the church. On the church or wherever it may be. And for you pastors, please pay attention. And please, I'm going to say something now. Nobody should take offense, of course. You won't take offense. I know, I know you love me. Praise God. I said I know you love me. Praise the Lord. Pastors, pay attention. There are people in our churches that they appreciate us, and there is no question about that. And they love us, and there is no question about that. And they come and they say, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. While we appreciate their respect for us, please draw the line. Are you with me? What did I say? Draw the line. There are certain lines that cannot and must not be crossed. You see with me over the years, people say, I need secretary, I need secretary, I need secretary. Pastor, you're working too much. But a lot of people that can really effectively do the work are ladies, and I don't want a lady working with me. Are you with me? And because of that, I go through the pain and the trouble and everything. Everything. Even right now, as you speak, there is somebody working in the church, a lady. And um, I told the other brother, you work with her directly. I don't want her in my office. And I told the person. And there are people in the church, oh, pastor, have you eaten this and that? I don't allow any woman to cook for me. If I'm going to die of hunger, let me die of hunger. Are you listening to me? And some of them have tried, oh, pastor, this... Except if it is a caterer that I have to order for the food and pay for it. But we love our pastor. We are cooking for our pastor. I don't eat like that. Pastor, be careful. And you all know me. I don't go to people's houses and eat. Don't be a glutton as a pastor. Watch over yourself. Watch over your life. Watch over everything. And the Lord will watch over you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I need a better one. Amen. Don't let anybody daddy you to hell. What did I just say? Don't let anyone daddy you to hell. And you will not end up there in Jesus' name. I will try to wrap up, wrap up very quickly. The third point, the peril of godlessness in a Satan-controlled family. The peril. 
The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5, This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, whether physical, natural, or spiritual parents, uh, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent fears, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, somebody help me with the rest, but denying the power thereof. And the Bible says, from such, 